Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I run EdTech Classroom, the blog, podcast, and of course, YouTube channel. Today is Vlogmas Day 17. Now, if you aren't familiar with Vlogmas, it's something that a bunch of YouTubers do where we post a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So like I said, today is Vlogmas Day 17, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some ideas for incorporating Google Arts and Culture into your classroom. So I'm gonna show you guys what this tool looks like, how to use it, and again, some ideas for incorporating it in your classroom with your students. So Google Arts and Culture is meant to be a replacement to Google Expeditions. Google Expeditions was a tool that students could use to go on virtual field trips. What sets Google Arts and Culture apart is that it has a focus on, as the name suggests, arts and culture. So Google Arts and Culture is an online platform that has high resolution images and videos of artwork and cultural artifacts from cultural institutions and organizations all around the world. So think libraries, museums, etc. So Google Arts and Culture is amazing because it has authentic cultural artifacts for students to examine. I personally find this to be a really high quality tool to use if you are a teacher who is looking for a way for students to visualize what they're learning about in your classroom. It's a really great tool because it has these high quality images and videos for students to closely examine and it's a great way for them to actually view cultural artifacts without have, having to travel you know all the way across the world so i really love google arts and culture and without further ado let's get into the video so i am on the google arts and culture website and i personally clicked on this explore page here I find myself on the explore tab the most, which is why we're starting off today's video on that explore tab. The homepage looks pretty similar, except it will tell you some, you know, featured topics for the day, some trendy topics, things that a lot of people are talking about in the art and culture space. But for now, we're just going to focus on this explore tab. So up at the top here, you'll see that we have some highlights. So there's experiments, there's art camera, 360 videos, there's street view of famous sites and landmarks. So those are some key highlights that a lot of people gravitate towards when they visit the arts and culture website. But there's also some other categories down below here that you can take a look at. So you'll see if we look at these categories, we have artists, we have mediums, we have art movements, historic events, historical figures, places. So again, lots of different categories for you to choose from. Then also right now on this website, there's the ability to explore by time period or by color. So color might be something that's particularly interesting if you're doing some sort of study around color. Maybe you're a visual arts teacher, maybe you're a performing arts teacher, you're doing something close, closely tied to color. That might be a neat category for you to explore. Or on the left hand side, if you teach social studies, maybe language arts, you might be more interested in looking at time period. And then also we have themes down below here if you want to take a look at some different themes along with collections and weekly highlights popular topics i could go on and on you'll see that this website is pretty robust there's a lot of information on here a lot of really high quality stuff for us to look at so maybe first let's take a look at these historic events section you'll see there are 628 historical events when i click on it now you'll see that i can look at all of the historic events that are in Google Arts and Culture. So maybe I want to take a look at the Cuban Missile Crisis. So I'll click on this choice here. So I am on the Cuban Missile Crisis here and you'll see that there's some information. It shares some information about the dates of the Cuban Missile Crisis, a description of the events, and some images as well. So this might be a really great resource if you are a history teacher, for example, and you could have students check this out ahead of class, or maybe you might spend the first few minutes of class having students actually look through this, uh, this page here on the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now let's say you just absolutely love this, you decided you like it, but you want to save it for later. You can go ahead and press this heart right here and it will actually save up here to your favorites tab. Now let's say you want to go ahead and decide to grab the link now to share with students. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. First, you can click on this link tool and it will add the link to your clipboard so that I can just paste it and share it with students through my learning management system. I could write it on the board, a couple different ways that you could share it with students. 
Then also another option here is you can click on this button here and you'll see that you can actually share this through Google Classroom. So because Google Classroom is a part of Google and Google Arts and Culture is too, they make it really nice and simple for you to actually share this with students directly through Google Classroom. So that's one feature I did wanna point out. So if you like the link, you can go ahead and share it with students. Now I'm gonna show you guys a few more options to play around with inside of this Google Arts and Culture platform. So next, next, let's take a look at this play tab. I know I said I spend most of my time in explore, but you can take a look at some of these other tabs as well. Under play here, you'll see that we have some different Google arts and culture games. These might be some fun activities to share with students who are early finishers perhaps, or maybe something you might wanna do if you have a transitional period in your classroom. This might be something neat for you to consider exploring in your room. So for example, you can play with music and sound, these might be fun if you are obviously a performing arts teacher, a visual arts teacher, a music teacher. Then you can also see sites come to life. You can learn through play. So again, great activities for early finishers, maybe some fun activities for you to incorporate during holidays as well. So for example, if you wanted to do this activity for Kwanzaa, that would be a really great choice. So I like to check out this play tab when I'm looking for something that's a little bit more fun to try out with students. Then next you can click on this nearby category to see what's nearby you. I'm not going to show you guys because I don't want to give away exactly where I live, but I'm going to then go click back on explore. All right, so we're back on that explore tab and I want to show you guys just a few more different experiences that you could have within Google Arts and Culture. Let's take a look at these 360 videos. So these, three, these 360 videos are meant to be very similar to what you experienced with Google Expeditions. So if you're familiar with that tool, or even if you're not, essentially this part of Google Arts and Culture is meant to be a virtual field trip for students, where you can actually experience something from 360 degrees. So if we scroll down here, you'll see that we can see art from all angles. Here's a really great interesting category for today. It says from virtual to reality, the world's first large scale 3D printed sculpture. And then you can also take a look at um, actual works of art and see it from this 360 view. This is a really cool one, I think, um, as somebody who's really passionate about STEM and computer science. This one here says go inside a space shuttle in VR. So if I click on this one here, I can actually, I'm gonna turn off the volume, I can actually show students what it's like inside of a space shuttle. So you could share this on your board, you could share this with students through your learning management system, you could have them watch it as a whole class, you could have them watch it on their own. There's lots of different choices, but this basically gives you a 360 view inside of a space shuttle. So that's a really neat example. You'll also see that you can tour the Hubble Mission Operations Room. Uh, you can see natural history come to light. So let's say you really wanna show this activity with students. You can share it with them by pressing this share button, grabbing the link, and then sharing it through, again, your learning management system, or you could project it on the board to share it with your students. So that is a really quick tutorial on how to use Google Arts and Culture. You can use the search bar feature at the top of your screen if you are looking to search for something specific, or you can do what I did and you can just kind of explore around, see what Google Arts and Culture has to offer. There's tons and tons of really great affordances and application in your classroom, so be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for watching today's video all about incorporating Google Arts and Culture into your classroom. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers, and during Vlogmas, I'm posting a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.